Congressman, your life was irreparably changed by the incident at the ball field. I I'm guessing that it was not just uh, some political changes, but more importantly, personal ones. Well, Mike, you know, it, it really does focus you on what's important in life. I mean, I, I came literally to the brink of death, uh, almost lost my life, uh, but in the fight back, you know, it was three and a half months in the hospital, uh, but it was such an incredible time to see the goodness of people. And, you know, I got to see God's miracles in full display. Something a lot of people didn't know for even a day or two was just how close you were to losing your life from the multiple gunshot wounds. Did, were you awake at any of those moments? Were you still unconscious during those very critical hours following the shooting? Well, right after I was shot, uh, I, I was trying to crawl away and just get away from the gunfire, and then everything gave out. My arms gave out, my legs gave out, so I'm just laying there, and I still hear gunfire, and for all I know, the next shot could be it. So I just started to pray, and, and as soon as I prayed, I, I just got this amazing sense of calm. Uh, it started kind of focusing in on what I needed to talk to God about. You know, I asked him, I didn't want my daughter to be able to, to have to walk up the aisle alone, Mike, and I... Uh, you know, I, I just prayed that I could see my family again. And once they got me on a helicopter, I, I just went out and I was unconscious for about three days. And when I came to, I had no idea how, how bad I was or, or how close to death I was, but my trauma surgeon a few weeks later told me that there were at least two different points in that first 12 hours where they weren't sure if I was gonna make it. I'm, I'm very lucky to be alive, but uh, God's miracles were on full display. Well, they certainly were. Uh... I'm, I'm sure there were people who would have been totally understanding if you just said, I'm done with politics, I'm out of here, I'm not going to do this anymore. If this is the new uh, result of being in the political arena, I'm out. Why did you stay? I got involved in, in politics because I didn't like things I was seeing. I wanted to be uh, a part of helping change it. I didn't initially think it would be by running for office, but I just wanted to be more involved in helping make, uh, you know, make this a better country. And uh, in Congress, especially in leadership in Congress as the majority whip, I get to uh, be directly involved in that. I get to work closely with President Trump on a lot of the things we're doing to get our economy moving again. And, uh, you know, I, I fought back through a lot of tough things, but once I started getting better, I missed the job. I missed working with my colleagues, the men and women that I serve with, who are just incredibly warm people. The side of politics you don't really get to see is just how genuine and warm so many people you serve with are. You had a very famous visitor who showed up at the hospital with his wife. Uh, he came to check on you personally. That was President Trump. Um, you know, not everybody gets a visit from the President of the United States when they're recovering from something. So that had to have been uh, pretty, uh, pretty meaningful to your family as well as to you. The fact that he came to the hospital, uh, not just himself, but bringing the First Lady, and, and they, they really helped my wife in those first few hours when she wasn't sure if I was going to make it through the night uh, to just console her and, and to give her some strength and support. And then when I was in the hospital recovering, every now and then you get one of these random calls from, you know, this weird number and it's the White House and they ask if you'll hold for the president and it might be like eight o'clock at night and it was President Trump just calling to, to check on me. And uh, that's the kind of person he is. I get to see that. You see it knowing him personally, but unfortunately that's not a side of President Trump that the mainstream media shows. And, and yet he is a genuine, caring person, and I got to see that firsthand. You know, he took my kids to the, uh, the White House and gave them a personal tour during the summer when I was in the hospital battling for my life, and, you know, they needed some kind of, you know, just an escape from that day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, tough, tough period. It, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff he did. Well, on a personal level, we're all so glad you made it. But on a political level, your voice of calm, reason, and civility is desperately needed in Washington, as well as some really solid policy ideas that you bring to the table. Uh, Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for your service to this country. I think Democrats, Republicans alike can admire what you do and how you do it. We're delighted to have you here. Thanks, Mike. It's good to be back in the game. And that's the uh, title of the book. My thanks to Representative Steve Scalise for being a voice for civility and unity in politics, which sadly is going to be needed now more than ever. Please check out his terrific new book, Back in the Game. It's available at Amazon and all your favorite booksellers. And you can keep up with him online at scalise.house.gov.